We all have a sticky note. We all. I don't have. I got no sticky notes. I don't have a sticky note. Static. 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 It's just me and you because we're close to the point. Too much static. How is that possible? Keep it in your pocket. Okay, we are on. If you would like to rise, please, for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'd like to call the meeting to order at 7 First item on the agenda is Chapter 61A Goudreau and Crooked Ledge Road. Attorney Amanda Zadon is kept, and I believe that's you. It is. Oh, Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, it's actually 61B that the land is classified under. And um, I sent the notice, and basically, we're just looking to expedite the process. I understand that you have 120 days from the time I give you notice. Um, it's going to be a little bit Discontinues, Crooked Ledge discontinues. Um, it's a, approximately five acres of land. And just for your information, I did go to the Conservation Commission meeting last night and asked them to discuss it, and they had um, put on the record that they were not going to recommend a purchase of the land, just so that you have that information. Did they actually get a perk there? Because it's really wet there. As far as I know, I mean, I can't speak to the intent of what the buyer plans on doing with it, but my understanding <laughs> is that. It was been for sale for a couple of years. Yeah, I'm not, I don't know how long you've been on the market. I don't know if I got the listing sheet on it. Mr. Chair? Yes, and they should make a motion we approve this tonight. Okay, do we have a second to approve this? Second. This meeting, okay. Any further discussion then? If this meaning that we would not exercise our right to buy a right of first refusal under 61B. Five point something acres for the legend to allow road. Any further discussion? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Amanda. Thank you very much. Okay. Are you related to Alan? I am. I am his daughter. Are you related to Randy? Uh, Randy is my husband. Wake up by your chickens <laughs> every day. Yes, a lot of people do. Yeah, and talk about it. I'm sure you know that. That's Randy's job. That's Randy's job. Randy's my husband. I, Thank you very much. I go back to high school. Your dad went to Willis tonight. Michael Brewer and all those people. My dad went to Stanton High. Stanton. Yeah, Stanton. we were in school together. Okay. Right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening. Okay, and the next item then on the agenda is, yeah, approval of minutes of September the 7th, October 5th, and October 12th. Well, on October 12th, we're approving minutes, but we didn't have a meeting. We were meeting with the Finance Committee, so how do we approve minutes for a meeting we didn't have? The Finance Committee called it and we were decided. Yeah. We were an open constitution. We have a, well, we had no agenda posted. And did we have an agenda posted just, for a meeting that we met just with? Had to meet back, just had the meeting. Oh, we had an agenda meeting when we were meeting with Finance? Yeah, right. Oh, okay. We were having a joint meeting. Then, Well, the, the first line of the thing says an agenda was not submitted or posted. Well, I think what you mean is that. So we should make a correction. Yeah, there was a, there was a so at least it says it, that we were meeting a single item. Our meeting was posted, but, but the agenda and like a complete full agenda of items. Yeah, but we should change that to was not submitted or posted, but there was an agenda posted. So there needs to be a correction to that. Yeah. On, it's on, on actually October 12th, 12th the first sentence. Yeah. It's the first of the minutes. So we're going to move to the first oh, minutes. Yeah. Okay, I'd like to make the motion to approve as amended by Mr. Fielding. Which day are you talking about? Uh, October the 12th. That there was an it's agenda. It's the first of the set. Well, there was an agenda item. Basically, just that select the meeting with the finance committee to discuss fiscal policy. That was posted. So we should have, we had an agenda posted. So all we should correct is that there wasn't a posted agenda. Come on. 
Thank you, Michael. Good catch. Okay, so we have a motion in any case to approve this. Do we have a second with second. as amended? Okay, any further discussion on these minutes of October 12th? Those in favor? Aye. 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 That's right, you're absent. Okay, thank you. Okay, so that brings us then to October 5th minutes, four pages worth. What are we going to do about that blank tape business? Audio tape cannot hear, get copies under 7 p.m. Energy Committee. Yeah, I think I just have to get her. Can I make a suggestion that we attach? He gave us a handout that yeah. night. Why, yeah, that. Why don't we attach that handout? Yeah. That should be over there. It's hard to hear from over there. But that should be attached anyway, that handout yeah. he gave. Absolutely. Well, she said, I think, In which case I'd move. Then I would move that we table October 5th until we have that summary. I don't think we can approve them without. Correct. Um, do we have a second? second? Okay, those in favor of tabling October 5th until we get the handout from the Energy Committee? Not, a hand, not the handout, the summary that Diane is going to yeah, put in. Yeah, we'll just put the handout. Okay, sorry. Okay, in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And Ann was absent. Okay, moving on to Tuesday, September the 7th. Then I was absent, so I will. Thank you. I'm taking over the meeting. Excuse me. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Uh, against? So moved. Back to you, Jess. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, brings us to the next item on the agenda. Thank you. Which is um, signatures, payroll warrant, and bill warrant. And you want to do the payroll warrant and bill warrant? The, so the amounts are right here. Payroll warrant for. W11-17 for the total amount of $323,294.20. Uh, we also have a bill warrant, uh, whose number is P11-16A for $63.16. Okay. <coughs> so I'll move, approve. Do we have a second? Second, I just want to make note that there is some there is ten thousand dollars being spent for the feasibility study that was spent in this matter. The town hall. Are we keeping track of that? We're paying, we're spending yes. on yeah, the price and process, it's not it's nearly complete. So, how is this good? How far off? Uh, they're having me first delay, and I think they have the final report. Is this the final payment? No, this is. Okay, so we have, first of all, the payroll warrant then, the W11-17, 323,294.20. We have a motion made and seconded. Those in favor? Aye. 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 And then the bill warrant in the amount of $63.16. Motion approved. Second. Second. In favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Sign B. And the next item then is, and are the PCFs. Yeah, Personnel change forms like, and a list of names. <clears throat> We're looking at personnel change forms and a list of names. And Diana, those are, I believe. Right. I'm thinking that we have actually already done that, so that's an agenda item. That, do you all remember the 
finance committee, Michael, we did sign this. We had three or four? Yeah. Okay, state election warrant for November 2nd, 2010. The original is in the folder. Have that here. And we need some action on that. This is a typical election warrant, reading in the name of the Commonwealth, you are hereby required to notify and warn the inhabitants of Southampton who are qualified to vote in the state primary to vote in the town hall, 8 East Street, Southampton, Mass. on Tuesday, the second day of November 2010 from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. for the following purpose. And I'll just list the positions that are open. Governor, Lieutenant Governor, Attorney General, Secretary of State, Treasurer, Auditor, Representative of Congress for the 1st District, Counselor for the 8th District, Senator and General of the Court for 2nd Hamden and Hampshire District, Representative and General of Court, 1st Hampshire, District Attorney, Northwestern, and finally Sheriff in Hampshire County. Do we have a motion to approve this ballot? So moved. Second. In favor? Aye. 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 Does that have to be witnessed by a true copy attest by the constable? No, that's just the posting. Okay. One signed by BOS put on Reggie's desk. We do need a the next one. We need another for us. Yep, that's what I thought. Okay, the next one then is in the packets. This is a letter from Verizon to the board members and three copies of an easement needed to provide communication services to property on College Highway in Southampton, Mass. Please sign the easements before a notary public. Has anybody sent that by Ed Colley just to see and make sure that's yeah. not, not interfering with anything that they're trying to do? On the corner, it says copy of highway. It's to put in our phone lines for later. Well, I mean, I have no doubt that it's valid. I just make sure that it's in a location that satisfies him. So we're waiting right now then for a notary public. Um, there's over here. Did we sign it? Oh, I'm sorry. Hello. Hello, Ed. Hey. Hey, just to double check, then you've seen this easement from Verizon on College Highway? Yeah, I was just kind of, I don't know if you can tell me why we would know. Okay, I'm glad we asked you that. I was hoping you would know. Here it is. Yeah, this is a subterranean one. Underground cables. Have you seen it? Well, this one is, uh, I, I just quickly glanced at it, but if I remember correctly. Well, uh, the other thing I want to tell you is, uh, if you don't give it to them, they're not going in the building, right? Uh, it's a standard easement. I just didn't know uh, why the other one expired. Otherwise, change set underground system. Yeah, it sounds like a new one. Okay. I have the reverse construction. Is, we've already put everything in. It will properly backfill said excavation. We already done all that. No, this is them saying they're going to. Yeah, we already oh. installed oh. the site work. It's all installed. All they have to do is, under the contract, they have to take a that big podium, podium out there and tie it into the D box or the uh, transition box. Which I think you helped us to get one. Uh, uh, it's 15 feet away. It's but that's the future. Like if they have a problem, they have access to it. Right. Yeah. But I mean, so. We just can't put a permanent structure above it. And I mean, it doesn't designate where it is. Yeah, it's a straight shot. It's not even dropped. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe it does. A strip of land 10 feet in width, beginning at the cross box. On the northwesterly side of College Highway, in front of 210 College Highway. Right, right in front of that, uh, right behind that half podium here. Then running northerly direction, distance of approximately 150 feet? Mm, that's about right. Okay, to the southeasterly side of the building at 210. Then continuing northwesterly direction, an interior basement conduit at distance. Mm -hmm. So they're inside the building. Yep, we're already in there. 40 we feet. We just pulled the uh, pull cord in this So. Make a motion. I I don't know, um, Horizon, Mike, from your planning days, 
is now requiring easements for retention. Yeah. So it wasn't Western Mass one. Well, I you know, just wondered why you make sure that you know and where it's located and that it's an appropriate location for you guys. It's, it's, it's the only location we've already installed the highway for the town That was my only question, whether or not it was appropriate for you in the highway department. So do we have the motion? We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll, I'll second. Okay, any further discussion? Yeah, okay, note here the grantor's title was the deed dated April 28, 1865. So we've owned that land for a while as a town. Okay, any further discussion? Those in favor? Aye. 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 And Eileen, this needs to be done in your presence, so I'll just go ahead and sign. Well, if we got on the agenda for next week, we could get started with it then. Well, you, next week you don't have a meeting. On November 2nd, it's your regular meeting. But we're meeting at Yes, but I was hoping that since it's election day and you can't meet in this room, right. that you would have a second meeting with the Finance Committee to follow up on your last meeting. Thank you, Thank you very much. Um, to follow up on your uh, next meeting, I mean your last meeting with them on policies. And they agreed to that, and we would have that at the library at Norris. So seven people came at the library. Yes. Second. Yes. Yeah, that is a regular meeting, though. November second. So that's right. So next week we don't have this. Yeah. So so just to reiterate, Mike, um, we're going to have a meeting on November second, even though it's election day. We're going to do that at the library at Norris School. We can meet on election day? We can. I asked Eileen. Um, we just can't meet here because, well, what I what I thought we could do is have our follow-up meeting with the Finance Committee. So you could have another joint meeting. <coughs> the one thing we still need to review is the audit results 
and David Kielsen couldn't be here at your last meeting, but he can be here on the second. So I was hoping you could review the audit results and then talk more about some policies. Do you know that the then. finance committee can meet? Because there are certain committees yes. that can't meet. I know planning board was one we couldn't meet. You can't. I don't think you can hold public hearings, but you can have regular meetings. Oh, okay. Yeah, I asked Eileen. And will um, this be like the last time yeah, the finance like a, committee holding it, or will we open it? And well, we are going to post an agenda with some other items on it because we have a few other things that need to be addressed, but mostly it's going to be that uh, finance committee meeting, like a round table like we did last time. And hopefully that will give us some, you know, kind of finalize some of those policies and develop more detail in the budget process, hopefully, and then go over the audit. Okay. So one suggestion might be to follow up on what Diana said about goals and objectives is then what we could do is remember the last time we did this was we all brought in independently our goals and objectives and we did sort of a multi-vote process. Remember that, Michael? How we, yeah, we got some totals. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, I can send that out to you. I still have the, the most recent of ours, which is actually about a year and a half old. Right. And we can send that out to you and you can add, subtract uh, as necessary, and consider those things which you think are the most important to you, and even assign a numerical value from one to ten to those. And we can gather forces, obviously, in open meetings, and, and see how that works out. Mm -hmm. And there's actually another. Um, in addition to looking at the broad goals and objectives that you did last time, I'd like to send you a list of items that. I've compiled based on your discussions of things that, you know, like membership contracts, contracts right now that need to be um, put to bed. You have, um, there's just a whole variety of things, it's like basically like a things to do list. Mm -hmm. But I'd like to close it because um, it's got a lot of projects on it. Mm -hmm. So, will we plan to do this on November 2nd? No. The meeting after. Yeah, perhaps the November 15th meeting, which actually that might not be a bad idea because that's the department head meeting. And it might be good for the department heads to see you going through that, you know, setting right. your goals and objectives mm -hmm. and allowing them to have some input if, they, if they're interested. November 16th. Yep. Good idea. Yeah, okay. Any ideas or thoughts, discussion about that? If you could David? attach those objectives. Okay with us? Yep. Okay. So we'll send out the materials yep. and then things on. Yep. Okay. November 16th. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. See you. Last year's. We'll give you last year's and I'll give you a whole list of like ongoing projects that you can look at including your prioritizing. Will that include like all the stuff that you need to do to get into the school to the new town hall? Uh, well hopefully that's gonna be done before um, you get to working on your goals and objectives. Yeah. <laughs> well we'll talk about that tonight. You might want to add that on your list just so you can check it off right away. <laughs> goals and objectives move to Larry done. <laughs> Okay, any other thoughts then? Dana, do you want me to read out that list of open positions then at this point? Sure, yeah, that would be great. Okay, okay for folks at home and also in the audience here, uh, we have... <laughs> <laughs> We're doing away. Listen up, because this, is, this refers to you. We have several open positions, volunteers, and every year, of course, as it says, residents volunteer their time, energy, knowledge, and talent to help the town of Southampton carry out many important functions of government. So this really is your chance to get more closely aligned with what goes on day to day in town government. Responsibilities can cover such diverse areas as capital planning, conservation, and historical preservation, identifying needs in the arts, culture, and recreation. The list is ever changing as committees are appointed to meet new needs. So if you have the time and expertise and willingness to volunteer, we need you. So please send a letter of interest including any relevant qualifications specifying the position you are seeking. I'll read these in just a minute here to the town administrator, P.O. Box 397, Southampton, Mass. 01073, or send an email to town administrator at town.southampton.ma.us. And the current open positions, the first is Agricultural Commission, which supports commercial agricultural and other farming and forestry activities in Southampton. And these are all appointed by the selectmen and also one by the school committee as well. There's also an opening on the Energy Committee. 
that's charged with helping the town develop strategies and tools to conserve energy, facilitate the siting of clean energy projects, and to enhance energy efficiency to reduce energy costs. Again, appointed by the selectmen. That would be a term that expires May 2012. Finance Committee, five-member elected committee, which meets every two weeks, Tuesday evenings at 7 p.m., and they analyze annual expenditure requests and make budget recommendations in all matters. Also determines appropriate expenses for the town's reserve fund. There is one vacancy on that committee until the next annual election, which is in May of 2011. The Local Cultural Council receives approximately $4,000 each year from the state to be awarded to artists, performers, and cultural projects that enhance the local community. The council meets to review applications and fulfill the state requirements for the grant cycle. And this is a way to provide funding for the enrichment of our community without a large time commitment. There are up to 18 vacancies on the local cultural council. And it's a three-year term. Oh, wow. that seems 18? like 18? Yeah, you can have 22, I think. So. Okay, the total can be up to 22. Like party. That's 5% of the time. <laughs> okay. And then, next to last, local school committee, the William E. Norris Elementary School Committee, has five elected members. Uh, the committee meets approximately once a month to ensure the needs of daily care and education for children in the municipality in grades K through 6 are met. Members work on school budgets, act as liaisons between the public and the school administration, and they hire certain administrators and set school policy. This would be appointed by the selectmen together with the remaining members of the school committee. There is one vacancy until the next annual election, in May 2011. And lastly, the Recreational Needs Committee, a seven member board appointed by the Board of Selectmen to continually evaluate recreational needs of the community and make recommendations to the board regarding purchase of recreational land and development or other activities and programs related to recreation. There's one vacancy and that term will expire May 2011. So again, please get in touch if you have the time, expertise, and willingness to occupy any one of these several positions that are open now, and we thank you in advance for your consideration. Uh, moving on, then we have the, we're now at action list, I believe, because we've already done the state election. We're at PCF, Personnel Change Form Policy. And Ed, thank you for being in here. Um, I have a letter here from Joseph Stahl, and which I'll, just one paragraph, I'll read this out. It's to the Board of Selectmen from the Personnel Policies and Procedures Board, and read Personnel Change Forms and Wage Changes. Due to recent issues that have arisen through the lack of use of the required personnel change form, or PCF, the personnel board during its October 6th meeting decided to request that the select board send out a memo to all department heads and employees reminding them that no employee shall receive an increase in wages for any reason unless and until a PCF reflecting such wage change has been reviewed and recommended by both the Personnel Board and the Finance Committee and subsequently reviewed and approved by the Board of Selectmen in writing upon PCF where designated. Joseph Stahl, Chairman, Personnel Policy and Procedures Board. So that gives us some pretty clear-cut direction. We have had a couple of issues in recent weeks over folks taking on jobs that really lacked the signed personnel change form. It's my knowledge that at this point we are completely signed. I'm not aware of anything. Yes. We signed yes, the last uh, uh, batch of electrical, they're all signed. Mm -hmm. And that's why I stuck around last Tuesday night to make sure they were the authority. Okay. And there's a sidebar to this as well, I understand, too, is that while well, some folks may have a job here and have a deeply signed personnel change form at the same time that they are indeed a employee here. They're not permitted at this point under Mass General Law to accept a contract opportunity, which is also funded by the town. Right. So from your perspective then as a member of the Personnel Policies Board, you have two right here, I'd like to ask both of you, would it be appropriate to put that in writing as part of our overall move towards more clear policies? I agree. Yeah. If you want that, we can either direct them to a memo or um, we talked about it, but that's why we made a ruling on that. 
Yeah, didn't, didn't we ask the disco upstairs to Dave Kielsen's office so there could be no confusion unless the PCFs are correct? This is a clarification. We did a clarification on a, an issue that we were dealing with, you know, the dollar and after the meeting, uh, we based on national law. But that we we asked that the policy be made clear to David Kielsen that he's not to sign off or grant. We also wanted to go to everybody involved. Well,